Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who is your girl, Sayyid Ahmed Rashid? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much for new subscribers for subscribing to my YouTube channel. And today we have an, a different episode, a different movement uh, from a different platform and everything. Just name it. And here, you know, it's only to talk about truth, nothing but bitter truth. And today by my side, I have a beautiful guest. Uh, let me name her Ayan. There's a lot she wanna share about her life, what she went through, and up to today, why she decided to open up and come to share her own stories. Let me introduce her to you. As I said, she's called Ayan. I don't want to use her name, and I know for her own privacy, she didn't want to be exposed. And today, uh, here she is. Let us welcome her. Karibu sana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Tell me about your life and what you went through. Why are you here today? I was nine years when my mom and dad separated. My mom ran away from home. I was left at all with my stepbrother and sisters who were, were held dear to me. So after some time, my dad remarried. The wife and other grown up kids. So we were, let's say, a blended family. When I was 10 years, one of my stepbrothers wanted to take advantage of me. So when my parents came back, I tried talking to them, they punished me instead. So I, con I continued staying at home, but I was all alone. There was no one I could talk to. I couldn't share it with anyone. That was the first attempt. How old were you by then? It was 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. And how old was your stepbrother? 16. The first attempt was not successful. He tried twice when I was, the second time I was 11 years. After one year? Yeah. That's what, when I decided to run away from home. So I ran away from home. Where did you go? I started going to my relatives, my aunt's side. They could not take me in. They would ask me to go back to my father's house. So I was not safe anymore in my father's house. So I decided to run away, go look for maybe a house girl job. I went to town. I remember I walked from my village to town. So in town, nobody would take me. I was still young, very young. Nobody, nobody wanted to take me in as a house girl. At the age of 11? Yeah. Okay. So few weeks in town, I used to sleep in the streets. It's about for three months I slept in the streets, yes. I met, uh, she, she's not a young lady, but she asked me, I have never seen you here. Why are you here? I explained myself, my story to her. She understood me and she took me in, in her house. Was she a stranger? Yeah. Okay. She reported to the chief since she, where she got me from. The chief said, you can stay with them. As long as nobody claims to, to a lost child, you can stay with her. So we stayed with her. She brought me back to school. I continued from there. So for how long have you stayed with that stranger that who helped you and picked you from the street? Almost 13 years. And where were your parents by then? Did they look for you? My mother was nowhere to be found. Nobody knew her address, where to think to get her. And my parents, my f other fa relatives, nobody wanted to take us in, to take me in, since my father was very. My father didn't want us to, to do anything with my father, my, mother, my mother's family. I call them my guardians now. They Those me, people. Yeah, who took me in. So we've been living with them until 2017, when 
Yeah, I completed primary school. I couldn't join secondary. I think I was abandoned to them. So they were not able to help you financially to go to higher uh, to high school. Yes. Okay. Then what happened? In 2017, it happened. Came a man he was looking for a wife after losing his wife. So. Were you a Muslim by then? I became I became a Muslim in 2014. 2014. Yeah, I was still in school. So the man came, proposed. I, th I thought that was a good opportunity. I can learn from poverty and I get married, no stress. So I got married in 2017. It was an, ar an arranged marriage. By who? My guardians. Okay. So they told me, I. I am, since we have gone through a lot in life, just get married. This man is old enough, he'll take good care of you. How old were you by then? He was 17 years. And what, how old was the man? He was in his late 40s. Yeah, I, could nev I can never say no to them, so I agreed to get married. From that marriage, were you happy? At first, I thought I would be happy, but things were different. Getting married at 17, knowing nothing about marriage. I, I didn't even know how to cook, not even to wash dishes. So the man, I got married, but the man was totally different from what people thought. After marriage? Yeah. Okay. A few months I got pregnant and that's when hell broke loose. I found my mother in 2018. That's when I found her. 2018. Yeah. Okay. Then what happened? It was never easy since I was, I was a leader Muslim and I was not born one. It has been difficult, very difficult. Because mm -hmm. after my marriage broke, and I couldn't even go back to my mother's place. So I went to my guardian's place, stayed there for some time. Then I went back to my mother to explain to her, I'm now a Muslim, you must accept this. And she said, no, Muslims are rich. You can't be a Muslim. I'm already one mom. You can't, we can't do anything about it now. It's already late. So they have not, they have not accepted that. Up to today? Uh, they have not. What challenges are you facing being a convertee Muslim and a family that doesn't accept you being a Muslim? Like now in my, in my village, there are no Muslims there. I'm for Embo. Okay. In a, from a very remote village. Remote village, okay. Yeah. Visiting the village, it's a, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. The first time I went there, the police were called to m for me. They called the police. There's Who called the police for you? The neighbors, even at the stage. Even them was looking at me, ah, who's this? Why is she here? Has she been sent? So the police came. Fortunately, there was a Somali Muslim who was a police officer in that post, so I talked to him, explained to him, and he made others understand. So in home, at home, in fact, I can't play when, I can't play when my family is there. I must make sure they are out, then I can play. What challenge, what, what benefit or what is good being a Muslim? Everything about Islam is good. The dressings, the behaviors, everything is just good. Uh, in case uh, my viewers, anybody will be seeing this story, wants to help, wants to, to do something for a Muslim sister like you who's just converted to Islam. What do you have to share with my viewers? My wish is 
at least I can get more knowledge. That knowledge will help me teach my son, teach my future kids, yeah. inshallah. My viewers, whoever is watching, if you really wish to help this young lady to have more knowledge on Islam, don't hesitate to contact me down there or through my email. I will write my email down there. I will write my contacts and my Facebook, every details that you're going to reach me. And uh, what helps other needs do you need financially? If you want self employ anything, just tell us what you want people to help you with. When I was growing up, when I grew up, I want to be a lawyer. That didn't happen. If I can go back to school, I believe in myself, I can perform very well. Yeah, at least I can get my dream. I can see my dream coming true. But for now, I'm taking AINA course. No job. Yeah. Maybe the viewers who are going to view this I can help this beautiful young lady to attain her dreams. As she said, she wanted to become a lawyer. Unfortunately, she was not able to continue with her studies. As a young lady going through this and nobody is there to listen, that is why I said, girls, come out. People are going through, just come out and speak. Don't hesitate and don't hide yourself. You never know where the blessings are coming from. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching my videos, subscribing, liking, and other people sharing. Till next time, thank you so much. It's your girl, Saida Ahmed Rashid.